Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, this is Redberry Leo here, and welcome back to another Civil Air Patrol video. In today's video, I am talking about Section H from <laughs> Regulation Ca Cap Regulation 39-3. And that section talks about special awards and recognitions. So every year, Civil Air Patrol annually recognizes its volunteers. And if you haven't checked out my summary video of recognizing volunteers, you can check it out in the iCard. I wanted to go a little bit in depth on this section because it's actually one of the longest sections in this regulation and probably one of the more important ones that people don't always know about. So annual awards are to serve as recognition for members in various positions for their contributions at the unit level, at the wing level, region, and national levels. And each time the person is receiving the award at that current level, it's passed up to the next level for consideration. So for example, there is the Civil Air Patrol Aerospace Education Teacher of the Year Award, which is given to a teacher that has done excellent aerospace education teachings within their classroom. So they are first nominated on the unit level, so this could be with a flight or a squadron, and once that nomination is completed, it's sent up to the wing level. And there are any number of nominations, like each squadron can nominate one person. Not everyone does, but they may if they wish. And the wing will consider all of those nominations and then select one to be the wing's aerospace education teacher of the year. And all wings send up theirs to the region level. The regions, region selects one that is, is selected on the region level and then it goes up to the national level and then one is selected from that national pool. So it gradually gets smaller and smaller as you go up from the unit level to the national level. And the reason why I'm bringing this up now is because on January 15th, all unit commanders are required to have their nomination packets all put together and submitted to wing. And the regulation suggests you should start on January 1st. It may take a little bit longer to do all of these nomination packets than just two weeks, unless you're exclusively doing those things. In which case, if that works for you, good for you. But if, if you are thinking about submitting awards for multiple people within your unit. Now is the time to start thinking about who do you want to submit a nomination for and start getting the materials together. Because it, it does take time and sometimes you actually need stuff from the person who is being nominated, like a picture and maybe information like a transcript um, for cadets for like the Cadet of the Year Award to show academic excellence. So I'm going to talk about each of these very, very briefly. There's so many of them, but I just want to talk about each one, what they are, and make sure that you guys know that this is out there and unit commanders should consider submitting nominations for all of them just to get their squadron or their flight's name out there to kind of say like Civil Air Patrol, look, Look what we've been accomplishing and look at how awesome our members are. It's so not only showing that the squadron is successful, but also appreciating your people as we should. So the first one discussed in this section, section G, I think I misspoke earlier, I might've said H, but <laughs> the life member award is the first one that's listed in this section. And it's for members who have demonstrated exemplary performance across their lifetime to Civil Air Patrol. They're selected by the CSAG and they are presented the award at the national conference and it's typically given with a plaque. And like, it is not very frequently given out because a lot of people only serve in Civil Air Patrol for a limited amount of time, but it is one of the highest honors that you can be bestowed by Civil Air Patrol. The next one is Senior Member of the Year. And it's not only the excellent achievements of the member across their lifetime, but specifically within the past year, what have they contributed to Civil Air Patrol? Going above and beyond what is expected of any senior member. And the 
nomination has to include length of membership, command service, emergency service participation, cadet program participation, aerospace education program participation, personal, senior training accomplishments, specialty track accomplishments, individual awards and decorations, including cadet achievements, impact on region wing programs, impact on national programs, and impact on legislative issues both locally and nationally. And so, as I mentioned with the process earlier, it first starts at the unit level, goes up to wing, wing to region, region to national. And so the timeline for that is that units have to complete it by January 15th and send it to the, the wing level. And then by February 15th, the wing must send it up to the region. And then by March 15th, it goes from region to national. And by April 15th, the national promotions and awards team at national headquarters presents its recommendation to the national commander who finalizes the decision. And then the national award is presented at national conference by the national commander to the, the member who's receiving the award. If that member is not available to accept their award, then their region commander will accept it on their behalf and present it to them at the appropriate time, which would typically be like at a region commander's call if they, if they have any meetings available, or then the region commander will give it to the wing commander and the wing commander will present it to the member. It, it just depends on how available that member is to retrieve their award. The next one is the Cadet of the Year Award, which isn't quite as rigorous, but is still pretty rigorous. So the, the cadet's requirements are to be Earhart or higher, a junior in high school or higher. They must demonstrate outstanding leadership within Civil Air Patrol and perform excellently in their school, academically. And it's the same nomination process. It goes from unit, wing, region, national. There is the Director of Finance of the Year Award, which starts at the wing level, and that is due by the 15th of February, and that's for the finance officer that they would like to recognize for their accomplishments. And the, the Director of Finance of the Year Award goes to the wing Director of Finance for their excellence over the past 12 months in service. The next one is the Colonel Edwin W. Lewis Incident Staff Member of the Year Award. And that one is a Emergency Services Award, which is for the incident staff member that has best contributed or has contributed most significantly to the, the unit's success in emergency services. And so it goes unit, and then all the way to national. Next is the Colonel Diane E. DeCamp Ground Team of the Year Award. And that is for a ground team specifically that went above and beyond in serving their community. And then the next one is the Civil Air Patrol Aerospace Education Teacher of the Year Award, which goes to a teacher that has done significant advancements in their classroom to really promote aerospace education. Next is the Major General Jean M. Holm Aerospace Education Officer of the Year Award. And this award recognizes the outstanding achievement of an aerospace education officer in a unit. And that, that's for senior members. They must have their senior rating within the aerospace education officer specialty track. They must have completed their Jaeger Award and promoted it among senior members. In addition to promoting other aerospace related activities like getting the model rocketry badge, STEM badge, doing AEX award, and the Brewer awards within their unit. The George Texado Legislative Officer of the Year Award is given to recognize the wing or region level legislative officer that has significantly impacted the success of the wing or the region with the legislators at their level. And this can be through recruiting congressional or state legislative members into Civil Air Patrol and just promoting Civil Air Patrol when Legislative Day comes. And this also recognizes obtaining state funding for Civil Air Patrol. There's the Norm Edwards Counter Drug Officer of the Year Award, which is for recognizing 
the member that has promoted counter-drug efforts to a significant impact at the unit level. And in the recommendation, it should include a narrative of how their counter-drug efforts have not only affected the unit, but also the local community. Inspector General of the Year Award is awarded starting at the wing level, which is for the wing or region level Inspector General that has served above and beyond expectations. Nominees for this must have completed at least one year of service within the Inspector General position. They have to attend the Inspector General's college in addition to having a senior or master rating in that specialty track. The Drug Demand Reduction Member of the Year Award can be awarded to a senior member or cadet on their efforts for drug demand reduction. So this can particularly be in association with the Red Ribbon Leadership Academy and promoting that within the local community and promoting National Drug Take Back Day within the unit and the community. Members that are nominated for this award should be able to implement and integrate DDR into any and all activities where possible. Professional Development Officer of the Year Award goes to an active professional development officer and their lifetime accomplishments and to focus on their more recent accomplishments in mentoring, assisting, and facilitating professional development, now known as education and training, for members who are within their unit. And this position is especially important for progressing senior members because not everyone may understand the education and training system. And so this award definitely is huge because it acknowledges something that not necessarily all units are actively pursuing because some units focus more on the cadet side when senior members also need mentoring, coaching, and assistance to really improve and get something out of the program themselves. The next one is the Air Force Sergeants Association National Cadet NCO of the Year Award. And members that are eligible for this award have completed their Wright Brothers, attended at least one encampment, and have demonstrated excellence as an NCO, mentoring, serving as a follower, while also being an active leader within their unit. The CAP Honor Roll at the U.S. Air Force Academy is an award given to the most outstanding cadet from the graduating class at the U.S. Air Force Academy that was previously a cadet or is currently a cadet. The next one is recognition of departing region or wing commanders, and this is at the discretion of the national commander when the national conference happens. So there are just a few more guys, so stick it with me. If you like what you're hearing, if this is helping you, please like leave a like or something or subscribe. This is starting to be a very long video. I'm at 30 minutes of recording, so I'm just I'm gonna take a quick break. The, the sun's already going down because I've been recording for so long. But come on, we're almost done. We're almost there. So let, let's let's do this. Let's get this bread. <laughs> The next one is the Civil Air Patrol Squadron of Distinction program. And there is a long list of requirements here that I am looking at in the regulation that talks about what the requirements are for them to be considered. And let's just go through them. Each January, National Headquarters puts together a statistical report on all of the units. And so the members report section that's restricted to commanders can, can show the squadron strength. So one of the requirements is having a minimum of 12 cadets at the beginning of the calendar year. Squadron growth is a huge thing. And so it's looking at how many members are recruited and retained in the program each year. There's cadet achievement. So how many Mitchells, how many Earhart's, acres and spots award recipients the squadron has had within the past year encampment attendance so like the percentage of members within the unit that have attended encampment that year as cadets there's also the cadet orientation flight program and seeing how many cadets have actually been get getting their orientation flights and so by looking at these statistics they determine that a squadron of distinction can be selected and so if, if you are interested in having your squadron be selected for this, it's really important to make sure you're promoting encampment, promoting orientation rides, seeing if your squadron doesn't have an orientation ride pilot, finding a local unit that might have one that can 
help facilitate more orientation rides for your unit. This might be a little bit more challenging with COVID going on because all of the wings are different. Some of them are currently shutting down actually, so I'm not sure how seriously they're going to take the encampment statistic and the orientation ride statistic because like cadets can't attend encampment right now. They haven't been able to for the past year and they haven't been able to do orientation rides on a consistent basis either. So I think they might be adjusting that award this year and they might replace it with other vari variables like cadets participating in programs like Stellar Explorer, Cyber Patriot, and completing badges. But I don't know. I, I have no idea. I'm just speculating there that I think they're probably going to have to adjust some of that criteria for this year. And General Smith might make a few adjustments with the National Promotions and Awards team just to make sure that squadrons won't be significantly impacted, that none of them would be able to be eligible for recognition. Squadron of Merit is for the top cadet or composite squadron within the wing. And it looks at the statistics of the squadron's performance, like the, the different items that I had listed earlier. The F Ward Rye Le Leadership Award is bestowed upon the squadron commander who is commanding the squadron of distinction that is selected by that is selected and presented at the national conference the american legion award to outstanding squadrons is submitted by the wing level in recognizing an outstanding squadron in that wing the air force association award to outstanding cadets is awarded one per unit and so it this is done on the unit level and the local charter for the AFA can also present the award to whoever is receiving it. And so th this is done so that cadets can be recognized for their accomplishments supporting the unit. There's also the Veterans of Foreign Wars Awards for cadet NCOs and cadet officers. And there's a nice list of eligibility criteria that I'm going to list off for you here. So it says for the Cadet NCO Award, eligibility is being good, in good standing academically, progressing satisfactorily in the cadet program, demonstrating outstanding leadership, being of high moral character, display of outstanding military bearing, both in and out of uniform, patriotism, potential for growth, and must not have been a previous recipient. For the Cadet Officer Award, it's the same expectations um, in addition to demonstrating outstanding achievement in the community, through service, and with aerospace education and leadership. And this is a recommendation from the unit commander that is sent to the Veterans of Foreign Wars headquarters. The last one. We are at our last one here, ladies and gentlemen. This one is the 50 Years of Service Award. So if you have served in Civil Air Patrol for 50 years, you are eligible for free membership afterwards. So after paying dues for 50 years, you're, you're good to go. So you get free membership. And this is a huge achievement that not a ton of people get, but this is a really major milestone of service to the community, state, and nation. And typically members receive a plaque in recognition of this major milestone. So we've just gotten through all of the special awards and honors. The sun has gone down, so my lighting is all weird because I just have this little lamp right here next to me because I didn't turn the overhead light on. But that was an overall summary of every single one for annual awards that you can submit your members for. I highly recommend thinking now about who do you want to recognize for their excellent service to the unit. If you are not a unit commander and you can't make nominations, I recommend discussing it with your chain of command saying, hey, the process is starting up soon. Maybe we should consider who we're going to nominate as a unit. It is at the end of the day, for, for a lot of these awards that are on the unit level, it is the unit commander's recommendation that's going up. So, you could always suggest people to the unit commander and see where it goes. So that's everything that I'm going to say for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, I am very proud of you. And that is all, folks. Until next time. Toodles.